and now I'm sad. Okay, we're still gonna finish up medicine, so let's go full on herbs, I think. And then we'll do something else later. Burdock leaves can be used as a poultice. Poultice. Poultice? Poultice? I don't know. Poultice. To draw out infection. The roots can be used to flavor a kind of beer, and the stalks can be eaten. The herb valerian calms anxieties and helps bring restful sleep. It is very popular with the nobility. The herb known only as savory comes in both winter and summer varieties. Both are used in treating wasp stings, coughs, and internal gas. They also make a good flavoring for food. Summer savory is a winter aphrodisiac. Is an aphrodisiac, while winter savory reduces sexual desire. Jelly made from the berries of the elder tree can cure many illnesses. However, only druids may safely harvest from elder trees. The others will be cursed by its touch. Properly treated, elderwood makes staves and pipes for religious ceremonies. And we're done herbs. Yay! This is the weekend of the general tournament. Nobles and commoners alike have turned out to compete against each other. Okay. And what event do I wish to take part in? I don't think I can do any of these. None. Watch from my tower. Let's attempt court, because why not? Okay. Okay, we're gonna finish poison, and... Let's do some divination, because why not? Alright, the purple flower known as Woman's Bane is a dangerous poison with, with no antidote. Touching it causes the body to go cold, then numb, then die within hours. A rapid charcoal purge may sometimes save the victim. Oh boy. You are too lonely to focus on this subject properly right now. Well, shucks. My lady, your father wishes to speak with you. He says it's urgent. I'll be there in a minute. There's someone I have to talk to first. You wait for the maid to leave, then hurry off to rendezvous with your agent. Your Highness, I had a quiet chat with the workers on the cargo ship, which carried the poison chocolates. Seems someone was bribed to take the package on the board. Take that package on board, not in Kegel, but further down the river in Merva. I had a look at the card that came with it and checked it against your correspondence. For a moment, you are mildly annoyed that she has somehow managed to get into your personal mail and read it without asking you, but then, that is the sort of thing you hired her for. And the handwriting does bear a certain similarity to a prominent noble. You won't like this. What is it? Your Aunt Lucille, the Countess of Nyx. What? I can't be certain, and even if she wrote the card, it doesn't mean she's behind the poison, but I'd be careful. If something happens to you, who benefits? Who inherits? My uncle Laurent, her husband. If you'd like, I could travel to the Duke of Seed and Merva and see if I can find out more. Yes, fine, go. Maybe this is a clever trick or a misunderstanding. And Dad wants to talk about just probably more bad news. You find your father standing over a map of the coastline of Space Grave. Ships have been sighted on, an appro on approach from Sangia, not trade ships. This is a war fleet. I've been expecting something like that. Within a week, they will be in Novan waters. Within two, they could reach the capital. Then we will fight to defend ourselves. You can try to use the treasury funds to hire additional soldiers, but it may be difficult on short notice. Well, we might as well. We need to draw up naval strategy for our ships to carry out. You could choose to act as admiral and lead the fleet in person, but the danger to you would be very great. Unless you think your personal skills will make the difference, I would strongly advise against it. Well, I do know a lot about naval strategy now. We maxed that out, so let's direct the fleet. And you have your mother's heart on us. An invasion. This is the sort of disaster for which a lumen's power may be worth the cost. If the fleet can be destroyed before they reach our waters, many lives would be saved. I don't know any magic with a single whole fleet. I'll have to talk to my mentor. You find the Duchess of Ursula in her guest quarters. A fleet from saint is attacking us. Is it possible to sink them all with magic? It is easy enough to attack one shoulder, one ship, as a demonstration, but to obliterate an entire fleet, you need an immense amount of power spread over a large area, more than any one Lumen could control. If you tried to raise that much power yourself, you would die. Not could, would. So it's hopeless. We'll just have to rely on our soldiers. And let's go back to court. Okay, and my mood is yielding. All right, well, let's do faith. So we're gonna do, actually, let's do history and faith. So Noman history and we'll go up to divination. I mean, meditation, rather. You read about the history of your domain. Hundreds of years ago, Nova was the center of a great empire, spanning the length of the western coast as well as a few island territories. Over time, your influence has waned. You practice assuming a sitting position that allows you to be relaxed and tranquil without being so relaxed that you are likely to fall asleep. Alright, danger on the high seas! Ships close in on each other, angling into range. You take your position in the spyglass, watching the enemy movements closely and shouting out any necessary changes in plan. The Sanchez have half as many troops as you do. Have half again as many troops as you do, but it doesn't look promising. Your skill in long range magic makes you effective as a cannon and more maneuverable, but there are far too many ships for you to take each one out individually. The eventual outcome is not in your favor. 
The Novan ships are sunk or scattered as Sanjian forces press towards land. Your grasp of strategy allows you to recognize when the tipping point has been passed and order your remaining vessels to retreat before they are all destroyed. This saves lives, but it means leaving the Novan approach completely unguarded. Many good soldiers were lost today, and the Nova's troubles have been documented. Since you have failed to repeal the invasion, the Sanjian fleet will soon land and their troops will begin to progress towards your capital city. Your remaining soldiers will hold them off as long as possible, of course, but the main strength of your military has been exhausted and the Nova's future looks weak. Court. Nova's history involves an endless slew of names and dates. Even as small as it's become, there are ten dukedoms, no, eleven now, plus the royal line. We hope no one expects you to memorize every lineage. No individual may hold more than one dukedom, but nobles seek noble spouses, so titles often come together before being parceled out to heirs. Your father is Duke of Caloris, and his brother is Duke of Mazomba. Bryn, Duchess of Halas, is the sister of Banyan, Duke of Marie, and so on. Arise, Duchess of Lila was the mother of the Duchess of Mead, the mother-in-law of the Duke of Kegel, and the stepmother to the future Duke of Alath. People sometimes call her Nova's Eastern Queen. You close your eyes and relax every muscle of your body in turn, letting that feeling travel down from you through your head to your fingertips and toes. You take slow, deep breaths, letting that air move through your body, feeling it give you life and energy. The invasion of Nova is proceeding. Your coastline is under Sanjian control. Soldiers have marched through villages, traveling fields, and frightening citizens. A diplomatic delegation from Sanjia has requested access to the castle to discuss terms, most likely for your surrender. You lack the strength to hold off their armies, and surrendering now will save many lives. It would seem you have no choice. You prepare yourself as best you can to meet with the representatives from Sanjia. You expect diplomats and a military representative, a general or an admiral. You did not expect the handsome man decked in jewels who now stands before you, a man announced by your servants as Togami, king of Sanjia. King constantly should be of even that much. He's a common musician who married his way onto the throne, and he's a lumen too. My dear young lady, how difficult this must be for you. Such, so much responsibility at such a tender age. Don't pretend to be my friend while you're killing my people. Temper, temper, princess. After all, I am here to save your people. A war benefits no one, don't you think? Such a terrible waste. Better to settle things in a civilized manner. A contest, a game, so to speak, with Nova as the stakes. Should I win, then your domain will submit and accept me as overlord with no further resistance. Should I lose, then my army will leave your domain in peace and shed no more blood. What sort of game? It is well known that Nova is ruled by Lumens. As it happens, I too possess the powers of a Lumen. I propose a formal duel. My power is against yours. The winner takes control of Nova. The loser dies. Your kings by your rules for my life. That doesn't sound fair to me. The rules of formal dueling have been passed down for centuries and must be upheld. It is important that we do this by the ancient codes. Why should I? If you refuse, then the war will continue. I'll sweeten the deal. If you meet me in a formal Lumen challenge, I'll call off the evasion. invasion even if I win. Really? I- whoa. I swear it by the gods, Nova will be free and safe. Why take that risk? You're winning the war. It is not your land I want, it's your crystal. To gain your power, I am willing to wage my own. Shall we begin? I can sense his power, it's so strong. I've learned everything I possibly could, but he's at least as good as I am. I don't like this, but what choice do I have? He was a musician once before he married his way into power. Can I use that? I'm not gonna sing to him, because I do not have a high enough <laughs> music thing. Let's accept his terms, and then I must. Togami explains the rules of formal dueling to including a carefully inscribed circle of words which will contain the effects of any powers you wield, protecting bystanders from danger. And then it is time to begin. You trade attacks, one spell sensed and countered by another, reserving your strength as much as possible. It might almost be exciting if your life weren't on the line. You need to end this quickly before his experience allows him to come up with a trick you can't defeat. He's used to dealing with magical attacks, but he might not be used to expecting a physical one. Perhaps if you rushed him, you could take him off guard, but close he couldn't use his fancy spells. But what would you do then? You still have to use magic to win, you can't just grab him and bang his head against the floor. Perhaps you could focus your power into the shape of a sword and attack him with that. Or maybe you could distract him somehow, you could cast a spell that he couldn't block. Oh, let's do a sword. Motes of shivering moonlight coalesce into a weapon in your hand. You lunge. Oh no. Oh no! You lunge, but he ducks under your blade and rolls away. Before you can regain your target, he summons up a shield of red fire that surrounds him totally. Now it ends. The fire sweeps forward, devouring your vision. Oh no! I was so sure I had it! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Elodie did not survive to reach her coronation. Nova would have to go on without her. But it doesn't have to end this way. <laughs> Alright, well, there we go. Um, we'll try again next week and maybe I can win. Thank you so much for watching. You know the deal. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Have a beautiful day.